everybody. Thanks for stopping by the shop for a little visit. My name is Chuck. And as always, I appreciate your time. Uh, I got me a little list here. Got a few few items that we're going to show today. Um, we're going to have uh, a tool build that I did. Um, don't show much machining. Have a little discussion about it. It's one of those things I wanted to get it done. Pretty simple machining, just some lathe turning and stuff, but uh, I think you'll enjoy the tool. It's for the plasma cutter. It's a uh, circle jig that uh, that I built to uh, copy the Hy Hypertherm's uh, master kit. Um, we're going to talk about health, um, some tool purchases, and a uh, sponsorship. Um, let's, uh, let's start off real quick on health. Um, two things. Uh, Chewy. I've had some uh, viewers ask me how Chewy's doing. Uh, if you remember, Chewy is the my good friend and mentor, uh, toolmaker, retired, that uh, by chance uh, got his hand caught in the lathe because he had a glove on. Did quite a bit of damage. Well, talked to him just the other day and uh, all in all his spirits are doing very well. Uh, he actually has been back out on the lathe working. Um, his left hand was an arm was the, the severely damaged, and in discussion with him, uh, he can uh, he can basically close his fingers now. I don't think he can reach his pinky. Um, of course, he doesn't have a lot of grip, and it's definitely sensitive to touch. All in all, though, with uh, he's doing well and his spirits are well. And uh, thank you for everybody that's uh, interested in, in his uh, health and how he's doing. Good friend. Uh, myself, um, it's coming up almost in a year where I started the journey on uh, prostate cancer. Uh, right now was about a year ago is when the whole episode started. And by chance, I was very lucky that uh, a blind biopsy was done. Would have never known uh, that I had prostate cancer. Uh, so to give you the short story right now, uh, my testosterone levels are finally back at normal. Uh, I don't have hot flashes anymore from the uh, drugs that they had given me to uh, hormone drugs to uh, knock down your testosterone. Uh, Prostate cancer uh, thrives on testosterone. And um, my PSA level, uh, I've had the second test. The first one was, uh, well, back up, a, a normal range would be from one to four. Anything above four, you're definitely going to be having problems. Although people do have very high PSAs and don't have, PSA, uh, don't have uh, prostate cancer. Uh, I was only three and a half uh, before this whole thing started, but the uh, it had been ticking up, and that was the reason that I had the blind biopsy, and I have to congratulate that doctor for being curious. Um, but anyway, so my PSA score on the first test uh, three months ago was uh, z uh, point z point zero one five. And my most recent one was 0 0.03. So way, way below the threshold. And uh, all in all, health-wise, I'm doing well. So that's enough update on that. And uh, if anybody has any viewers that are watching this, uh, feel free to contact me about prostate cancer in my journey and my selections of what I chose to do. Um, uh, I can, I can at least explain my experience and the, what I found. Enough said. Uh, so let's, uh, we're going to click over to a, um, oh, so a tool purchase. <laughs> uh, so recently, if, I know if you look at me, you look at, you're definitely watching Tom Lipton. Uh, he showed a, uh, a little screwdriver, you know, battery operated screwdriver, where we had the, chamfering tool in it that uh, you know basically fits like a drill driver let's uh, <laughs> let's flip to that video and, yeah, lessons learned uh, Tom certainly enjoyed it I had a little discussion with him so let's flip to that and then we'll come on back
So we'll have a little discussion about deburring, deburring holes in a part. So here, what I've typically done in the past, if I have a part that's out of the vise, you know, typically if it's in the vise, it's in a machine, I'll just use a chamfering bit right in the machine if it, if it so works that way. I do have this uh, speed handle with the chamfering, and so I could come over and basically use it just like that on a piece. A lot of times, handheld, I have this handheld piece, I pull it down, clean the part real quick. Well, as you know, the other day, Tom Lipton showed chamfering bit that goes into a drill driver. Well, old Charlie here looked up these on McMaster Car, and this unit here is, eh, I forget right now, Just I just got it, but... Eh, Close to thirty dollars for one for one bit. Tom had showed he bought the whole set, and so you're talking about you know, well over well north of a hundred dollars to buy the whole set of them. Hey, Charlie was uh, Charlie figured it out. Went online, found this uh, set from uh, China, and uh, here's the whole set. Ten dollars, huh? Hey, that's a that's a spanking deal, but let's uh, as as you know, sometimes when you get something from China, you get something that works and it's a great deal, and sometimes you get uh, a handful of things that uh, yeah, you toss them, I guess, for ten dollars. Yeah, maybe they're fixable, but we'll we'll talk about that. So let me. Uh, I don't know if you'll see this, but. There's two ch holes chamfered here. One is with this guy. Did a very nice job. You know, very, very simple. Just press the trigger. I like it. The second one was done with, I think it was this one, with one of these. So let's go over to the microscope and take a look. I'm going to reposition the camera, so we'll be right back. Well, I've got the aluminum part here in the microscope, and this was the first attempt of chamfering with the Chinese tool bit. And you can see at the edge of the hole how it's rolled over. And so I said, okay, let's, uh, let's press a little harder and dig a little deeper and see what we get. And so there it is again and you can see it's got a chamfer but you can see that the edge is rolled over and enough that you can see it and enough uh, you know visually and you can feel it with a fingernail and let me turn the part over and here is a chamfered hole uh, chamfered hole. It's probably Tom calling me, telling me I told you. All right, <laughs> wasn't Tom. <laughs> so there's a, a nicely chamfered edge, no burr on the high side, nice and clean. Hmm. So why did that Chinese tool, a very simple tool, why did it? create such a burr. Well, let me grab the tool. Let's take a look. See if I can just drop it right in here and get it in focus right away, or I may have to shut off and come back. Yeah. Let me let me shut off and come back. Okay, we're back. Have the chamfering tool down in under the microscope. And what you're looking at is one of the cutting edges on the flute. You can see that it's basically got a big old burr or a rollover on it. And uh, hence that's why as it tries to chamfer, it just pushes the material out onto the top of the, of the part. There you can see another, another view. So, got what I paid for. $10 worth in 
and you get a, uh, a part that doesn't have a cutting edge on it. Now I didn't try all of them and maybe I should do that. Let me stop and we'll go look at another one real quick just out of curiosity. Well, here's one of the smaller ones. See the front edge of it's got a big rollover on it. Hasn't been used. This is right out of the box. And it appears to have a little bit more of a cutting edge, but not bad. You can see the next uh, the next one in line. Looks like somebody welded on top of it, but of course this is magnification. So anyway, uh, hence, um, it looks like a big gouge out of there too. Look at that. So anyway, uh, the if you're going to uh, invest some money, as Tom, as Tom and I have talked, he laughed at me. He said, hey, buy it twice. <laughs> uh, this is, let's see if I can get this real quick for you. Eh, maybe not. This is the tool itself, the one that's good. And you can see there a nice sharp cutting edge. So anyway, uh, just to follow up on chamfering, Tom's idea of the uh, using this tool uh, is a great, great idea. And, uh, you know, works real, uh, real slick, real quick. And come up, you can see that's an aluminum. And, uh, heck, let's try it in a little piece of stainless here. So this is uh, stainless steel. And nice little chamfer on there. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Thank you, Tom, for sharing. It's a great uh, addition to the shop. And all you need is really one, one head. You don't really need the whole set, in my opinion. Okay, thought I'd share that with you. Uh, I may, I don't have the, I don't have a tool cutter grinder. I may go over to Carl's and see if these are actually, uh, you have the ability to clean these up and sharpen them. If I do, that'll be a video of some other day. Okay, well, we're back from that. Um, as you can see, uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and look at uh, Craigslist purchases real quick. Um, I recently sold some toolboxes and I sold a uh, Baldor grinder and stand. Had some extra cash in my pocket and so I thought, oh, let's go shopping and see what you don't need. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go look at... Uh, uh, a couple of little quick videos. Um, I purchased uh, some a set of stubby drills. I do have a set right here. I wanted another set back by my my lathe. Uh, some reamers, uh, an under and over and under, uh, more reamers, and then uh, some uh, small diameter, longer than normal drill bits, longer than jobbers. Nice to have when you need it. And uh, if you remember my last video, I couldn't find my. Uh, my Minotoyo cow. Oh no, I I didn't find it. I found a new one back there, in the uh, on my table and couldn't figure out where it came from. Well, that that was number three that I have, and so uh, I bought number four, and you'll see it in the uh, video. So let's uh, go take a look at a quick run of tool purchases.
All right, back from that. Now the uh, uh, the tool build. So I have a hypertherm plasma cutter, and I've always wanted a circle jig. And hey, like I said, I had some uh, spare cash, so I said, she's uh, let's just go buy the kit. So I looked it up at Hypertherm in the, their deluxe kits, just about two hundred dollars. And yeah, you can buy real inexpensive ones, uh, just like the uh, chamfer bits. Uh, so I decided. I looked at the picture and I said, "Hell, I can build this thing." So I went in the scrap drawer and picked up scrap, and I built it. And uh, you're going to see the product that I built, along with a quick demonstration of using it one time. Uh, it worked, turned out really well, and I'm happy. And and. Uh, I don't know when I'll be cutting circle discs, but now I have the uh, tool to do it. Well, here is the uh, little build I've been working on. This is a photo of the Hypertherm Deluxe uh, Center Cutting Kit, whole center cutting kit for the Hypertherm plasma gun. And I recently sold some toolboxes, and so I thought, oh, I got some extra money. I'll go buy one. Well, this guy's $200. And so I thought about it. I said, hey, $200, I think I could build it. So uh, let me show you some uh, quick parts here. And uh, the product turned out well, and then we'll show a little video of uh, me using it at the end. Never had to use a circle cutter yet, um, but it's nice to, again to have it in the tooling arsenal whenever you need it. So if we start out with, uh, we'll do the easy one, the magnet. Magnet's over here in this corner. And I'm gonna drop this down here, I think you can see it. Well, there's my magnet. It's got a rubber cover. I put a, uh, a piece in it to line up my center pin. And there's my center pin that comes through, center pin, and then there is the angle pin when you want to go without a magnet, and you use this guy. This magnet came off of one of these guys. Uh, they're for working on a car, putting your little nuts and bolts in. You can see this guy's gotten trashed a couple of times. Finally, the glue broke off, and so it, it donated the magnet. That was nice. Next piece, you can see the uh, long rod, uh, hex rod, I think you can see that. It's a hex rod, and there's a hole in it, and the hole in there is for the rod to go either into the magnet or in the offset rod. And so I have a piece of brass hex rod and a piece of brass, and uh, use the, uh, uh, the sure, uh, sure clip, sure... Uh, uh, anyway, I use these guys. I can't remember the damn name. Sherlock's. Sherlock's. Uh, on top of an Allen head, which makes a heck of a nice thumb screw. So I've got the, uh, where is it? So you can see, tighten right down on it, holds it in place. So there's the rod. We got our pins. And then if we look, I needed a uh, device to hold or a piece to hold the actual plasma torch and that's this piece here and it fits the one inch diameter of the plasma torch and I have a set screw there to go ahead and tighten it down onto the uh, torch so it doesn't fall off. Uh, I was using it and it's annoying when it falls off. Uh, it's annoying when the wrench drops also, but uh, simple little, just a little tightening, and uh, it's on the unit. Now, this, this piece came out of a donation out of this part. I picked up a whole bunch of these rolls, aluminum rolls, uh, that are sitting in a drawer, and uh, that worked out really well to uh, be a donor to make uh, that adapter. And then the final piece, piece is, hang this over here. 
The final piece is this head unit. And the head unit is where the wheels attach. It's two wheels. Um, so this piece right here was in the scrap bin. And you can see that it became the donor uh, for here. So basically I had to bore the hole out so that the torch would fit. And that's the that's where the torch spins. And uh, I opted to uh, copy the wheel design and uh, put the slight angle on the wheels, the brass, and uh, it turned out real nice. No measurements. Everything I was doing was basically looking at this photo and uh, kind of guessing it by eye. And uh, I pretty much hit everything nuts on. Um, ended up putting a little uh, relief in here, which helps lock the uh, legs, and uh, it's a fun little build. So uh, here, we'll go to a clip uh, that shows the uh, unit in action, and uh, hope to uh, have this in service whenever I need it. Well, here's the test of, first test of my circle cutting jig. I don't know if that's hot or not. Got to play with it.
Well, it was a success. Happy with it for a first time. Cut me a nice circle. And let's, uh, we're, okay, we're back from that. Uh, I think we went there and we're back from that. And uh, final, final item is uh, Banggood uh, has uh, always been a sponsor and uh, supplied tools for me. Some tools have worked out very well, some were not that well. And I've always been honest on the review of whether the tool is not good or not. Uh, if you go back in my archive, uh, I got live centers from them and uh, basically showed that they were no good. I actually machined one to fix it. Uh, they actually sent me two and they were similar. Uh, I've also gotten product from them that's uh, very good. Uh, one's this little microscope, things like that. There's a, there's a variety of things and of course if you watched uh, a lot of the channels where other guys are sponsored, uh, there's a lot of good tooling that comes out. Well, uh, here's, uh, here's a quick uh, video of what uh, I requested and it got sent to me. Okay, well we're back from that, and uh, you can see they sent me the uh, 3D printer, and uh, I've uh, that'll be upcoming videos. Uh, there's been a lot of assembly videos. I'm going to maybe show a little bit of the assembly, and then uh, hope to show you some uh, build items. And again, if you watch me, you probably watch uh, N C N C N Y C or John Saunders, you know his channel. Well, he just recently did a video on 3D printers and the variety of things that are already out there that you don't even have to design, uh, that you can just uh, get the free file and create. Uh, so watching that video and watching all the various things that were built, uh, I'm really excited to uh, get into the 3D printing. So uh, there'll be some upcoming uh, videos on that. That said, uh, again, uh, Thanks for stopping by the channel. I hope you're all uh, staying safe in today's world and uh, staying busy. Uh, you got to have a purpose. You can't just stay locked up in the house watching the TV. And uh, we'll catch you soon on a, another video. Thanks again. Hey, hit the subscribe button. Always helps. Hit the bell button. You know, hey, you want to send me money? Send me money. <laughs> Bye.